So I'm gonna demonstrate some hamstring curls. We got a couple of different machines here. This one in particular, I'm gonna demonstrate an adaptation technique that I use because I find this one in particular, it's just really hard to get it so that your good leg or your solid limb isn't the dominant side because you've got so much different leverage and the socket and the pressures that you feel inside of the socket uh, kind of limit you. So I find this to be helpful. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, once I get in the machine, I'm gonna cross my sound leg over the prosthetic limb. So this isn't a right over the left. If you were, if your prosthetic side was the right side, you need to do it the same way as well. So the prosthetic limb is the first to make contact with the back of the machine. And this will help you. Now you need to focus when you're doing the exercise that both of the hamstring muscles are working equally, but this works pretty well for me. So you see I cross that over. The prosthetic limb is now, it's against the back of the machine, and it's also helping to be stabilized inside the socket with my other leg around it. So again, we're looking for reps of 10, 2, 3, 4, Five. And it's important as he's doing this Six. to note that when he gets to the top here, Seven. he's given a little squeeze, a little extra squeeze in his hamstrings, just making sure Eight. that things are tight and then controlling it on the way back down so the weight's Nine. not just falling as he goes. Ten. And again, I get so much more control by crossing over the process. Why don't you show real quick over. what happens when you don't do it? So if I do it like this, it's really So what's, what's going on is as he's going through, his sound limb is staying in contact with the bar and his process isn't able to follow through with the range of motion and get all the way and control the weight all the way through the full range of motion. So he's really getting an exercise on, you know, 80% on one leg and 20% on the other leg. And if I try it with just the prosthetic limb, it's just too much pressure on my residual limb in the prosthetic socket. So, but actually that feels really good. I think I'm doing it that way. I like the way that felt. Hopefully that works for you. Okay, so we're going to do hamstring curls now. Um, there's lots of different machines for hamstring curls. Um, the ones that we're going to show today have, have a little bit different look than maybe the ones that we're accustomed, most accustomed to and that maybe you'll find in your gym. A lot of times that uh, this bar here that's across Scott's shins would be more up here on his thighs um, and it kind of helps to stabilize. We like that better than this, but we're working with what we have today. So we have this. So, um, so we're gonna do, again, we're gonna do about eight to 10 reps based on how many we know we can do and repeat. Okay, we're gonna so, start, yep. And so you notice as, as he's going through, as he gets to the bottom, he's getting a big tight squeeze, he's holding for a second and then he's letting the weight come back up very slowly. It's a really important thing for this exercise and it, if you're having trouble doing, the, doing it in this manner, it's really important to take the weight down. It, Oh, an exercise like this, you can really do even with the minimum amount of weight. If you're creating your own resistance in your legs, you'll you'll feel it tomorrow. I promise. That's ten. Okay. So the next exercise we are going to demonstrate is the bench press. So a couple things to discuss before we get started. Um, one, the bench press is a core exercise. Remember, as we mentioned earlier, of course, not just our abs, but we're trying to get our back, uh, chest, and all of our body engaged, as well as even our hamstring right. with the exercise right. that we're doing that, that core. So, um, when you do the bench press, I think it's important to mention, it's not about how much weight you're doing, it's about how controlled the exercise is, the maybe going slower um, on the way up, holding it out, and then controlling it on the way down, and that just lets it slide down. Right. And also, so you can see a lot of times people do bench press with a, with a barbell, with one bar, and they're pushing, which is a good exercise, but it, it isolates things a little bit more than when we use the, when we use the, the, the dumbbells here. It's making our, our arms work independently from one another, so it's working both sides in a more even manner. And also our core is a little bit more yeah, engaged because, right. you know, the weights aren't working in stabilization going on. Right. So, okay, so, um, like we've been mentioning, Pick a weight that you can do, eight to 10 reps. Um, I don't want to say comfortably, you want to challenge yourself to get there, but you should be able to get between eight and 10. Right. Think about a 70% effort. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so yeah. go ahead. This is the bench press. I got both of them together. Yep. All right, so I'll count off. One. 
two. getting up from that, that we just set the weights down when we're, in the, when we're still laying on our back. We don't want to try to sit up while we have the weights because that's the way that we're going to injure our lower back. Maybe we're going to lose our balance. There's uh, a lot of potential for injury with that. So before we get up, we want to make sure that the weights are on the ground. Okay, we're going to demonstrate push-ups. Uh, we spoke a little earlier about how the chest is a part of our core and how we're, um, we want to use those muscles. Um, we did planks, we were showing how we stabilized our right. abdomen muscles there. Push-ups are great because we're kind of doing all of that at the same time, so. Right. Um, and these are gonna be an adaptation for our bench press. So some of us may not have access during a certain time to, you know, to dumbbells or a bench. So push-ups are another great way that we can get in and be accessible. Um, we've always got a, a way to do push-ups. As long as we can get down on the ground and get back up, we can do push-ups. I think with push-ups, we really might want to be doing more like 10 to 15 than that sure. 10 in reps. Right. But, but we can I, work our way up to that. And there's some different yep. ways where we can do them on our knees right. and things like that. Exactly. And if you're struggling doing a traditional type, type push-up, you can utilize the, the exercise until you get stronger. So. Right. So we're going to come down. I'll count them out. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this is a modified push-up. If you're you struggling, do, you do those ones, and I'll do show these ones. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Rocky. <laughs> right. There's lots of ways we can do these. So seven. here's a modified uh, way to do a push-up. You may not be strong enough to do the ten to fifteen. So this work, I'm going to demonstrate ten of these. So we'll just. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, the next exercise we're going to be doing is called the banded side steps. Um, a lot of us have seen these in some of the other workouts, but. Uh, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be doing 10 steps in each direction with it, three rounds. So you see that what Scott, and the, the thing to note here is the placement of the band. Scott has the band pl placed on his prosthetic socket above the cut end of his bone. So being a transtibial amputee, that puts his down here somewhere, you know, on the upper part of his shin. If he was an above the knee or transfemoral, he'd have it up here. Um, the higher you move the band up, the more resistance you should probably try to put on the band. Um, so that you can feel, feel some pull throughout the full range of motion. Um, but the idea is that we don't want that band below where your bone is cut, because what will happen is that will start pulling the, the prosthesis and making the socket contact your, the, the cut end of your bone and cause a lot of discomfort. So, so we'd like to mention too, when you're doing the exercise and you step, it's important that you don't let the other leg you're lifting up just snap back like this. Right. You want to do that. Low and controlled as he's bringing it back towards him. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And it side steps. All right, for today's exercise, we're going to start with the leg press here, and we're going to do uh, eight to ten reps on the leg press. Um, so this, the leg press is a great way for us to increase some weight without having balance be incorporated. So for those of us that squats are difficult, 
we can do our squats with no weight and we can challenge the muscles in our legs by, with a little more resistance by doing the leg press. So uh, if you want to go ahead and start. Um, now, there, some leg press machines are going to look a little different than this. It doesn't matter. Sometimes you might, in the gym that you're in, they might even call it a hack squat machine. Any of these are okay as long as there's something where you're moving in a position where you're going to almost like you're sitting in a chair with your knee at a 90 degree bend and then pushing up through. Um, if, if you are comfortable and can get a little bit past 90, that's gonna challenge our quadriceps a little bit more and that's okay. But as long as we can get down to 90 degrees, we're happy with the range of motion on this exercise. So we wanna go through and we wanna get a, a weight that it's challenging to get eight to 10, but that we can repeat for three rounds. And then Scott's gonna keep, keep going until he gets to his number. Where do you at, Scott? Count him out. Okay. Nice. I guess the only thing I'd say on that is the nice thing is you can shift more weight over to the prosthetic side to try to make sure you're getting a good workout on that side. Um, where with the dumbbells and the squats, you might not be as comfortable, but just make sure you're not leaning too much on your sound side so that you're at least uh, working both sides equally. So our next exercise here is gonna be called the lat pull down. This one's fairly self-explanatory. It's, it's gonna be a, a lot of back and bicep exercise here. Um, and the lat is the muscle that we're gonna be focusing on primarily. So we're, again, we're gonna do three rounds of eight to 10 of these at a repeatable weight. And we'll go ahead and have Scott go ahead and get started here. And while he's going through those, I'm gonna talk through a little bit about his form here. So what we see is that Scott's in a position where his upper body doesn't have to move at all. He's able to stay in one position. He's able to pull from his sides and his arms exclusively. What we don't want to see is starting to row. This isn't a rowing position. This is something where we're trying to isolate these muscles. Um, these muscles are, especially our lats, are primary stabilizers for us. So even though they're not part of our lower body, they're still going to be important when we start doing things that are as dynamic as running. Um, and so, yeah, this, this, this is the form that we're looking for. So if you feel like you have to kind of pull back as you're doing it, you're going to want to make sure that you lower your weight. Find a weight that you can really just pull straight down and, and keep focused on your form. Nice little pause at the bottom, slow and controlled on the way back up. Are you ready? You ready. Okay. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Again, looking for a weight that you can do eight and ten reps. So. We want just to kind of focus on quality of the exercise, do it as long as you can, and then at the top of the minute, you're going to start the next one. And we're going to start in two, one, penguins. And that's ten seconds. Twenty seconds, twenty five, and thirty. Now you is can it, go. You can certainly go longer on these, but the idea is we're going to be doing two rounds, and so don't burn yourself out at the very beginning. And if you feel like you got energy in the second round, then lengthen then, in then the second can, round. Yep. Then push a little bit. It's, this round is going to be a little bit harder because we're fatigued. We're going to try to push to 40 seconds if we can on the ones that we can in five, four, three, two, one, go.
And there's 10 seconds. 15 seconds, and it's starting to burn already. 20 seconds. 25. Remember, this is one of the harder ones, so if you can get through this, they get a little easier. 30. 35. And 40. Who I'm glad that's done. <laughs> We're gonna go 40 seconds on and 20 seconds off. Today we're gonna to be doing planks. So okay. I think most people are familiar with, with the position of a plank. There's two ways that we can set up here. We can set up kind of in a traditional push-up position. Here is called a high plank. Or we can set up on our elbows. This is called a low plank. There's really not much advantage or disadvantage to either. It's gonna be what's more comfortable for you. So Brianna, we can go ahead and start the clock whenever you're ready. That was 40 seconds. That seemed pretty fast. Can we go? Can we well, go? We just, could, so, so what would we So that was 20. You that can do 20 seconds. or 40. You can do 20 seconds. We're, we'll wait till the minute's up and we'll do 40 seconds next time. That's okay. Mm -hmm. This is just a good way to show that the actual number doesn't matter. We're trying to stay on the one minute clock right. here for the total. You want to push yourself. Time. So push wherever yourself. you start, yep. like we mentioned earlier, not being comfortable. Um, even if it's 15 seconds, right. That's there's okay. nothing wrong with where your starting point nope. is. Because you're going to find if you're keeping track of where you are by using weights or whatever to measure yourself, within less than two weeks, you're going to notice gains already. And when we start to see gains, that's what motivates us as humans to keep pushing ourselves and going for more. Yep. And so you see this time, I, my elbows, I don't really like to do the, the lower plank on this floor because it hurts my elbows. I'm not kind of a wimp about that. I love it. Um, but, you can, but the thing about it is, is if, if, you, if you're not comfortable in the high plank, you can always get a pillow, you can get a blanket, you can get a, some sort of a padding. You can put something under your elbows so that you're not putting that pressure on there. Um, you know, you want to you find a spot where you can hold long enough that you're uncomfortable in other places besides your elbows. Great. Thanks, everybody. Don't forget to do the cool down, and we'll see you tomorrow.